blessings answer all our prayers. Thank you. You may be seated. Honorable Minister of Information and Culture, Alajilai Mohammed, CON, Permanent Secretary, Federal Minister of Information and Culture, Mrs. Lydia Shew Jafia, MNI, Chairman, National Population Commission, Honorable Nasir Isakwara, FNSC, essays to Mr. President, you are seated, Federal Commissioners, DG National Population Commission, DGs of power starters and agencies under Federal Ministry of Information and Culture present, Directors, Federal Ministry of Information and Culture, members and management staff of MPC present, editors, bureau chiefs, other gentlemen of the media, very distinguished ladies and gentlemen. I want to formally welcome you all to the 24th edition of our series, PNB Administration Scorecard 2015 to 2023. This platform gives opportunity to ministers and chief executives of this present administration the opportunity to share their success stories in terms of performance, progress report, and achievements. It also gives the media that is regarded as the mirror of the society the opportunity to ask pertinent and genuine questions on the account of the stewardship of our chief executives. Very distinguished ladies and gentlemen, this platform has featured 23 ministers of the Federal Republic, and today we have as a special guest the chairman, National Population Commission, Honorable Nasu Issa Kwara. Mr. Chairman, I welcome you. With the kind permission of the coordinator and chief moderator of this event, the Honorable Minister of Information and Culture, Lajilai Mohammed, I would like to quickly recognize the presence of some dignities in our midst. I will recognize those from the ministry I know so well. While my co MC, Adamu Simbad, will now introduce those from the National Population Commission. Very distinguished ladies and gentlemen, we have with us under our ministry the two S's to Mr. President. One of them is Mr. Shegun Adeyemi. Mr. Adeyemi, we welcome you. Thank you so much. Also with us is another essay to Mr. President attached to the Honorable Minister of Information, Mr. Williams Adelaide. Mr. Adelaide, I welcome you. Also with us is the Director General, Federal Radio Corporation of Nigeria, Dr. Masoud Liman. I welcome you, sir. Thank you. Also with us is the Director General, Nigerian Television Authority, Malam Abdulhamid Salihu Dembos. I welcome you. Just sitting is the DG National Broadcasting Commission, Malam Balarebo Shewu Ilela. We welcome you. Thank you very much. Also with us is the Managing Director, News Agency of Nigeria, Mr. Buki Ponle. I welcome you, sir. Also seated, very distinguished ladies and gentlemen, is the Executive Secretary, Nigerian Press Council, Mr. Francis Inwosu. Thank you very much. Also with us is the Director General, National Orientation Agency, Dr. Garba Abari. I welcome you, sir. We equally have with us today the Director General, Voice of Nigeria, Mr. Osita Okechuko. Thank you so much. Also with us is the Director General, Nahoto Malam Sami Kangiwa. I welcome you. The last but not the least, very distinguished ladies and gentlemen, is the Director General, National Commission for Museums and Monuments, Professor Abba Isa Tijani. I welcome you, sir. At this point, let me welcome Adamu Simba to please introduce other dignitaries from National Population Commission. Thank you very much. The Honorable Minister for Information, 
distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you very specially, like my senior just did, to this very, very special occasion. Today, the National Population Commission is at that point where it to know it to not go back on the agenda that it has set, which is counting the people in Nigeria come April this year. Preparations are in top gear. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, we have a set of men and women, Nigerians, dedicated, committed to this project. Join me as I introduce very specially the man driving the process at the National Population Commission, the distinguished chairman, who we know internationally as the digital chairman. I welcome Honorable Nasser Isa Kwara. The chairman is not doing that alone. The composition of the National Population Commission has 37 federal commissioners representing the 36 states and the FCT. Today we have the compliment of joining us in this auspicious occasion. The Honorable Prior Commissioner representing Oyo State and the Chairman Public Affairs Committee, Dr. Eitayo Oyetunji. In order of sitting arrangements, I welcome very specially the Honorable Prior Commissioner representing Bielsa State, Honorable Mrs. Gloria Edson for MNI. The Honorable Fire Commissioner representing River State and the Chairman 2023 Population and Housing Census Committee, Dr. Iqbalibo McDonald Harry. <laughs> representing Ocean State on the Commission of the National Population Commission, distinguished. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you distinguished Senator Mudashi Hussein. The Honorable Fire Commissioner representing the FCT, distinguished, ladies and gentlemen, Honorable Joseph Shazen Kwali is also here with us this morning. <laughs> Dr. Abdul Malik Mohammed Durungwa is the Honorable Fire Commissioner representing Kaduna State on the Commission. You're welcome, sir. <laughs> representing Nakwaibum State on the Commission of the National Population Commission, Honorable Minister and distinguished, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Dr. Chief Benedict Ukwong, fellow Nigerian Society of Engineers. Seated at the back row is the Honorable Federal Commissioner representing Katsina State on the Commission. Distinguished, ladies and gentlemen, Engineer Bala Almubanye, fellow Nigerian Society of Engineers, is also here with us. Representing Benue State on the Commission, distinguished, ladies and gentlemen, I welcome very specially to this occasion Barista Mrs. Patricia Yanya Kupchi. The Director General, National Population Commission, distinguished, ladies and gentlemen, is also here with us. I welcome Dr. Telson Osifo Ojogon. <laughs> the Chief Technical Advisor to Nigeria's 2023 Population and Housing Census, Honorable Minister Sai, is also here with us. I welcome very specially Dr. Collins Opio. <laughs> I also like to use this opportunity to welcome to this very, very special occasion. The directors of the National Population Commission here present this morning. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, with the kind permission of Honorable Minister, sir, these are the teams from the National Population Commission. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, my co-MC. Honorable Minister, sir, the Director General, NYSE, is represented today by Mrs. Ngozi Nwatarale, who is the Director of Skills Acquisition and Entrepreneurship Development. Because we recognize our youths, it's very important to let you know that Ambassador Dr. Solomon Adodo, President, National Youth Council of Nigeria, is here too. Thank you. You are welcome. Thank you very much. Very distinguished ladies and gentlemen, let me quickly give the following information. This event is being covered live 
by the Nigerian Television Authority and Federal Radio Corporation of Nigeria and also Voice of Nigeria. It is also streamed live by the FMIC Facebook social media platform. Please just note and to quickly walk you into the program of the day. Very distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Minister of Information will give an opening remarks after which the Chairman National Population Commission will now make his presentation. We we'll now move into a very important segment of this engagement, which of course is the question and answer section. This segment is specifically meant for members of the press. For the gentlemen of the press that are here, please, when we get to that segment and you are recognized to speak, you tell us your name, the media organization you are representing. And please, restrict your questions and your comments to the issues to be addressed by the chairman of MPC in his presentation. Let us be decent in the use of language. Let us avoid any distractive conversation that could distort the flow of communication. I want to thank you so much for your readiness to cooperate with us. Having said this very distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it is my special privilege to invite the Honorable Minister of Information and Culture, Alajila Mohamed, to please give the opening remarks. Honorable Minister, sir. The Chairman, National Population Commission, Honorable Nasir Isa Kwara. He's not from Kwara State, though. <laughs> the Permanent Secretary, Federal Ministry of Information and Culture, Mrs. Lydia Shiljafia, MNI. The Special Assistance to the President, Media One and Two, Mrs. Adeyemi and Mrs. Adeleye, Federal Commissioners, Directors General, National Publishing Commission, and National Census Publicity Committee members, in particular my own uh, colleague, the Commissioner for Oshun State. Uh, Mr. Mudashir Hussein, whom I almost not recognize because now sporting white mustache and beard to intimidate me. No, I'm not intimidated. Directors General, Chief Executive Officers and Directors under the Ministry, Directors and management staff of the National Population Commission, editors and bureau chiefs, members of the press, ladies and gentlemen. When I made the clarification that uh, the chairman, even though his surname is Quara, is not from Quara, is because I don't want to be accused of um, nepotism. Because uh, the chairman, incidentally, is very close to us in our ministry. Not only does he have a surname which, which resembles Quara, but 32 years ago, he was also the best man at the wedding of the permanent secretary, Minister of Information and Culture. Thank you very much. I welcome you all to the 24th edition of the PMB Administration Scorecard Series, which we kick-started last October to massively showcase the achievements of the Board Administration. So far, 23 Honorable Ministers have featured in the series. These are the Ministers of Works and Housing, transportation, aviation, interior, 
agriculture and rural development, finance, budget and national planning, water resources, environment, mines and sea development, science, technology and innovative and innovation, power, Niger Delta affairs, women affairs, sports and youth development, police affairs, Minister of State Petroleum Resources, Health, the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, Communications and Data Economy, Federal Capital Territory, Industry, Trade and Investment, Foreign Affairs, Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development. Today's edition is a very special one because this is the first time since this series started that we are having a special guest who is not a minister. And that guest is the chairman of the National Publishing Commission, MPC, Al Haji Nasir Isakwara. He's here to tell us about the 2023 National Population and Housing Census, after which we will inaugurate the Census Publicity Committee, which I chair. The 2023 census itself is a legacy program of the Buhari administration. Hence, we are featuring it here on our scorecard series. As you are aware, Nigeria last had a population census in 2006. That's about 17 years ago. Almost an eternity when you consider the importance of population census to national development. It is recommended that a national population census be held at least every 10 years. Ladies and gentlemen, the conduct of 2023 population and housing census is a top priority for the administration of President Muhammad Buhari. This is born out of the desire to be good an enduring legacy of evidence-based planning for sustainable development. Our population remains the most important equation in our national development. The people are both the agents and beneficiaries of the development process. Hence, development must start and end with meeting the aspirations of the people for improved living standard. The Buhari administration has invested heavily in human capital development, social infrastructure, agricultural development, etc. All part of building Nigeria's economic base. The conduct of the 2023 population and housing census is therefore to complement the giant strides of government by laying a sustainable basis for a planned and prosperous Nigeria. The federal government notes with satisfaction and commendation the efforts of the commission to positively rewrite the history of census in Nigeria through meticulous planning and massive deployment of technology at every stage of the national exercise. We are happy to note that the Commission is not only making efforts to conduct the 2023 census, but also laying a solid foundation for the seamless conduct of future censuses. The enumeration area demarcation, which involves the division of the entire landmass of Nigeria, into small enumeration areas that can be covered by a pair of enumerators has been carried out meticulously and digitally and the products generated will be relevant for other planning purposes. 
All the buildings and structures in the country have been captured and geocoded. I therefore urge all persons resident in Nigeria to extend maximum cooperation to the National Population Commission in its bid to deliver accurate and reliable demographic data for planning purposes. On, those, on this note, it is my pleasure to invite the chairman of the National Population Commission to make his presentation. Honorable Chairman. Samuel Alim, Minister Anu Rajim, Ismail Rahman Rahim. Okay, this. The Honourable Minister, the Permanent Secretary, uh, Honourable Federal Commissioners, all the Director Generals, all under the Ministry of. Uh, Information, Director General, National Population Commission, Directors of both ministries of, uh, sorry, Minister of Information as well as uh, National Population Commission, our respected members of the 2023 Population uh, Housing. Uh, National Committee on Publicity, members of the press, ladies and gentlemen, my brief today is going to be uh, both making the presentation and we'll have visuals because sometimes stories are better told when you see the pictures then you can appreciate what uh, has been covered but uh, I must say that uh, I want to commend Mr. President for taking this very hard decision to conduct census uh, in 2023 after about 17 years and uh, he is taking this decision again the, against the background of COVID-19 problem the economy with a uh, uh, low level of uh, revenues coming in and competing demands as well as insecurity and not just that, combining census and uh, elections at the same time. So we have uh, 2023 as a very important year for us, conducting elections after which we do census. And um, I want to say I'm most delighted to be at this auspicious occasion of press briefing on the 2023 uh, Population Housing Census and the inauguration of the 2023 Population Housing Census Publicity Committee, National Publicity Committee. We're going to have them at the state levels too. Indeed, this event marks another major milestone in the Commission's journey towards the successful conduct of the 2023 population and housing census. To generate 
evidence-based demographic and socioeconomic data for planning purposes. The overarching vision of the 2023 census is to produce not only accurate, reliable and acceptable census data, but also an inclusive and user-friendly data that will be used by all segments of the society for development planning and uh, critical program interventions. Therefore, as part of this commitment, the Commission will deploy full digital technology in the conduct of the census and uh, it will leave no stone unturned in ensuring that the results of the census is acceptable to Nigerians and uh, the quality of data to be generated meets international best practice. This aspiration has informed the choice of the methodology and the quality of preparation for the census in the last few years. In all this, the need for advocacy, publicity, and public enlightenment cannot be overemphasized. Our minister, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, permit me to present a video documentary on the status of the preparation of the 2023 population housing census. The methodology highlights the achievements recorded by the Commission and the outcome of its strategic engagement with key stakeholders which have engendered international, national and subnational endorsement and support. Can we have the video, please? It's no longer news that the 2023 census is scheduled to start March 29th this year, and it is the first digital census to be conducted in Nigeria. Some experts acknowledge no digital census. This magnitude and peculiarity has taken place in Africa before now. Indeed, history is being made by this Issa Kwara led National Population Commission. Let's put you up to speed on the progress so far by the Commission to ensure a verifiable exercise. One of the first physical processes that was carried out by the National Population Commission as a foundational block to the proposed 2023 census was the Enumeration Area Demarcation, EAD. It's in the division of the whole country into small, small areas that two enumerators can cover within the census period. What it means is that the whole country will be divided. Every part of this country will belong to one enumeration area for the other, whether it is inhabited or not. Without enumeration area demarcation, enumerators will not know where to start or where to stop their enumeration. So it's a, a guide for them. It will restrict them to their particular enumeration area for them to work. That way, we will not have any gaps, we will not have any overlap. That means we will not leave some people uncounted or count some people twice. And the enumeration area demarcation also helps us to, for logistics purposes, from there we will know the number of field staff we are going to take, the number of materials and all that. Enumerators went to every nook and cranny of the country counting all kinds of houses. We're going to be counting all the houses in the local government and every local government. We're going to be taking notes of all the public buildings, schools, hospitals, health centers. We're going to be taking notes of roads that are tired, roads that are not tired. We're going to be taking notes of roads that are just walkways. 
We're going to be taking care, uh, taking note of every building, whether it's completed or not completed, whether it's a shanty, whatever the condition it is. Aware of the fact that there were various means to access the different parts of the country, the commission was prepared to face this task. In some other areas, motorbikes were acquired to reach difficult terrains. When these houses are marked and demarcated within an immigration area, the information is put in a device called the Personal Digital Assistant, PDA, which is given to every enumerator. The device sends the information to the enumerator's dashboard. Progress of work done, what number of households are they supposed to cover, how many have they covered. It also goes ahead to tell you what is the average time of interviews in each of the states. It also shows to tell you that are they going to be able to complete the work in the uh, number of days that is uh, assigned to, for the job. After this digital marking, the result is that all houses, structures and more can now be identified through satellite imagery. Apart from the dual referencing, there is more to the protective characteristics of the EAD. EAD is geofenced, which means that you cannot transfer the information from one demarcation area to another. The information is protected. How is this useful during census enumeration? You cannot for example, get a building as that does not exist because in the first place you are using images, downloaded images that reflect actual condition on the ground with coordinates marked out. So that is one measure of quality that that building, for example, where you want to enumerate a person must surely be on ground. It means that it exists. What matters now is the number of persons inside. The enumeration area demarcation has been concluded in all 774 local government areas. After the EAD, the National Population Commission went ahead to conduct an EAD update, which was a further verification of the initial exercise. This was done in selected local government areas. Within this period of the EAD update, there were two census pretests to assess the validity of the records that had already been imputed in the census dashboard. Now to check the adequacy of this very first level of preparation, that is creation of enumeration area uh, maps, we need to carry out a test. And this is why we conducted the first census pretest. And this was conducted in June 2021. The next phase of the preparatory process to the April 2023 census was the trial census, which was conducted between July 11 and 30th, 2022. The trial census, which is a dress rehearsal of what the actual census would look like, also had as part of its activity the building numbering and household listing before the enumerator's interviews with respondents. One of the respondents for the trial census was President Muhammad Buhari, who was so elated to receive the chairman of the National Population Commission, Nasir Issa Kwara, and his team right there in his hometown in Daura, Katsina State. The commission is leaving no stone unturned to make sure that the 2023 exercise produces credible results that is acceptable to all. As part of moves to achieve a smooth communication flow during the exercise, the commission launched a situation room which has a digital call center that will be active 24-7 during the actual census process. The situation room became active on May 18, 2022. Every call that comes in is either attended to by the call center operators. If it is a call that will be referred to the chairman for response, it will be referred to the chairman in his office for him to respond. All these processes make the exercise almost error-free and quality assured, as emphasized by the Director General of the Commission, Ojogu Telesi Sifo. All those internal mechanisms are there to evaluate the system. The, the monitoring and evaluation 
system is to check and make inputs, targets that have been set, the key performance indicators that will tell us where we are doing well, how well we are doing it, and when we are not doing it right. We do not want to disturb the interviewers when they are conducting interviews for them to be answering our questions, but we meet the supervisors, the coordinators, the field coordinators and the field supervisors, and those that are working in the field that are not conducting interviews, we ask them some questions, we have some interviews with them. And during the trainings usually, because the training is just immediately before the outing of the census. So within that period, we must have had a group, WhatsApp group that we formed, so that whenever we send out the forms, it's online, they fill them, everything that is ongoing during the census, we have questions that are set for that. So we now give them out. Immediately they give us those answers, we now analyze it. The commission, the way I see it today, with about four years of our involvement in these preparatory processes, uh, is very ready now, good to go. In the last two years, the chairman, Nasir Isakwara himself, has led his team of management staff on advocacy visits to former heads of state, governors, traditional rulers, security operatives and other stakeholders to convince them about the seriousness and commitment of the commission to actualize a credible e-census. After seeing the preparatory work that has been done to have a successful exercise, these principles have fully endorsed the process, making the advocacy visits fruitful. The census should lead on to re-demarcation of constituencies, which we have run away from since 2006. And the most important, the population census provides statistical data for economic planning. It is something that we place utmost priority and we're giving all cooperation. Oh, I want you to know you have a good, big job ahead of you. I pray you do it well, and I pray it's accepted by all. Data, 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 it's everything. Statistics is everything. If you don't have data, you can't plan. On behalf of the FCC administration, I wish I show you of uh, maximum support. And this support will be provided along the lines that you've already related. We will provide publicity uh, because it's very important. What I would like to say to my people is that this should give the armies more cooperation because it will help us. We are all working to achieve the same uh, objective. This is a national call, so anytime you come calling, we are not worried and we provide necessary security and support for your job. One of the leading partners of the preparatory activities to the upcoming national census in Nigeria is the UNFPA. This international body has supported the National Population Commission very strongly in training of its staff for the different phases of the exercise. Country representative of the UNFPA, Ola Mola, has also worked closely with Nasir Isakwara on many of the initiatives of the commission. The census is long overdue and it is time that we understand what does the population look like in Nigeria. So when we know that, that will be transformational and it will be a key driver to deliver the Nigerian development plan. Therefore, welcome you all, Your Excellencies. Thursday, August 11th, 2022, was very significant in the life of the Commission as it held its first National Stakeholders Conference and public presentation of the 2023 Census Strategic Document. The importance this administration places on sustainable development. The event was graced by His Excellency President Muhammad Buhari, ministers, legislators, governors, traditional rulers, and members of religious faiths. The diplomatic community was also well represented and ably led by the United Nations resident coordinator in Nigeria, Matthias Shimane. Each representative had good and acceptable messages for the stakeholders, raising hopes of a potentially successful national population census exercise. President Muhammad Buhari, while opening the summit, underscored the importance of a credible and digital census to Nigeria. It has become imperative 
to convince to convince this summit to promote a robust and informed national conversation on the processes and procedures of the 2023 census and to convince citizens on the need to submit themselves for enumeration purposes during the 2023 census. The president, alongside other guests, later unveiled the 2023 census strategic document. Unveiling of the Road shows and sensitization programs have been held in all 36 states of the Federation. There is even a partnership with the National Orientation Agency on sensitization of Nigerians for this exercise. The commission will need about a million core and ad hoc staff for the census exercise. Already, the e-recruitment process started November 2022. About 400 facilitators have already been engaged. These facilitators will train over 800,000 enumerators, supervisors, and other staff that will conduct the census exercise. We have uh, devised recent three methodology for training. First, we have the self-learning methodology, then the virtual classroom training, and then the contact classroom training. There's hardly any good month that passes without you talking about some level of recruitment and training. So internally, you realize that staff training has been taken very serious so that you get the best out of staff. By self-learning, we mean that we provide materials on census methodology. We make them available to all that are qualified online. And uh, they will go through the materials. There are evaluation tests there they take after each module that prepares them on their own for what is the content of the census. The next stage, for those that successfully go through that uh, first stage, we invite them into a virtual classroom training. Then after the virtual classroom session, there also we have assessment which we also use to determine who is really fit to continue to the work of uh, census uh, taking. Now, those that again perform very well at that stage, we invite them to the contact training. And now we are seeing them one-on-one -on -one because even if you are very good online, your appearance too matters to us because you are going to train high level uh, people that will be coming to partake in the census project. And then we want them to now go through practical sessions. The thousands in the workforce to be used for the census exercise will be trained in different zones of the country by these facilitators. I've been here for exactly a year now, maybe a year, one month or two months. You'll be amazed at the speed at which things have moved. I am amazed myself. One other unique feature of this census is its green feature. This will be a green census. We are just greening the census processes and procedures to maintain a greener environment, achieve sustainable development goals, meet the Paris Agreement assigned by the president. We look at it as said, okay, let's green the census. Let's reduce emission. Yes, we've gone paperless. We, in the 2006 census, we were using large topo sheets. We were using, using a lot of papers, our manual, our, our, everything was not digitalized. Now functionaries register online. We do a lot of communications. The information will be uh, stored in the cloud. We are, going, we are getting somewhere. We are really achieving and we want to do more. And that is the aspect of sensitization. We are going to engage up to a million functionaries. If you were to tell just one person and the other person tells another person, you end up having up to 5 million people sensitized on what is climate, what is the impact of man to the environment. One of the biggest challenges that countries in Africa have with census implementation, particularly during this digital era, are two things. It's 
budget because technology requires heavy investment, initial heavy investment is expensive and then you have to build capacity to use it. That also takes money. And two, it's acquisition of the right technology. You can't just go into the money. You have to do some homework and then figure out, big look at your context and all those things and make sure that you are getting the most suitable technology for your context, for your country, for the price that you can afford. And these things take time. Okay? But these decisions have been made in Nigeria fairly quickly. Many of the equipment needed for the exercise are already on ground and the commission is doing all it can to ensure others come in in good time. The PDAs, uh, the Federal Executive Council, have approved the procurement of 480,000 PDAs and uh, arrangement is being made to get the extra numbers by the grace of God so they will be in receipt of the first 100,000 of these PDAs that are coming and others will come in, uh, in subsequent uh, things. So we're exploring all options to ensure that we have adequate PDAs for the exercise. Many people have raised questions on some of the issues that may hinder a smooth census exercise. Some of these issues include the closeness of the time of the exercise to that of the elections and the heightened insecurity in the country. Why do we even want to do the census this year at all? Seeing that there's an election in the air. Uh, truth is, we are passionate and uh, committed to see that we conclude this session with this administration based on some historical uh, background. We, we discovered that in time past, uh, censuses were affected by transition in government. And that's why we want to ensure that this census is concluded under this administration, especially against the background of the amount of commitment that Mr. President has put into it. For him, the aim is to have uh, a legacy, a, a, a working document for whichever government will come in, something to plan with. Election is sensitive, no doubt about it. You know, you have people struggling for one position. But for census, uh, the sensitivity is not as strong because everybody wants to be counted. And you see people who share different political persuasions coming together to ensure that they are counted. So in terms of healing, you know, some of the bitterness that will arise from the election, you need the censor. Because different political parties will belong to a community. They will need to collaborate, to cooperate. We are not unmindful of the insecurity situation. But truth is, we've been on the field for quite some time now. We've been out there conducting the uh, emission area demarcation. And uh, each time we've gone out, we've been in the field at once for about 30 days, sometimes for more than 30 days. And uh, we have successfully conducted this emission area demarcation in all the local governments of Nigeria. And if we have been able to stay uh, in the field extensively for 30 days at a time. And uh, we've been able to do this even in spite of the insecurity situation. We have a lot of uh, assurance that we can now do the actual renovation, which is just about five days. Enumerators who come from the local environment. There are people who are very, very conversant, you know, with the environment. I mean, they can always navigate their way. So I do not, I mean, we are not going to move enumerators or even I don't come from Sokoto to Calabar or from Ibadan to Madigori. We do not necessarily transmit results for census. We transmit data. All that analysis will be done. But it moves on the, our, our enumerators move from house to house, conversing for information from respondents, households, and the rest of them. And when you get all that, you go straight from your PDA and go straight to the server. And the server is configured in a manner that will ag aggregate and disaggregate the data that comes into it. I want to assure Nigerians that um, the Commission is prepared to conduct a fully digital census for our dear country. And um, 
I want to seek their continuous support and cooperation uh, to own the project, submit themselves to be counted so that uh, um, data that can be verifiable, that is credible and that will be transformational, uh, will be provided uh, to this country for the new administration after the elections uh, can use for national planning. The 2023 census is here. Let us embrace it. This is a definitive period for Nigeria and no other can make it happen but us. No resident in Nigeria is too unimportant to be part of this exercise. No one is too young or too old. Everyone counts. You count. So be counted. Very distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I'm really very sure the chairman of the National Population Commission may want to make a concluding part of this documentary. But before he comes to the platform, let me welcome Otumba Olusha Gurinshewe, Director General of National Council for Arts and Culture. You're welcome, sir. And the DG Nigerian Tourism Development Corporation, Mr. Folorisha Koka. We welcome you. Mr. Chairman, sir, you may please wish to conclude the other aspect. Thank you. Honourable Minister, distinguished uh, ladies and gentlemen, from the video documentary, you will agree with me that the Commission um, you agree with me that um, the Commission has done a good job and um, considering that this is uh, uh, an exercise that needs to really get all Nigerians involved so there is need for information education and enlightenment of all Nigerians on all the scope of the census which will involve the counting of every person resident in Nigeria during the census and that it will take place simultaneously in every household in the country. Given this scenario, information they say rules the world. As such, targeted advocacy and sustained publicity is no doubt imperative to the successful conduct of the census exercise. This becomes even more crucial in view of the fact that the census is taking place immediately after the conduct of the 2023 general elections. Therefore, the mobilization of critical stakeholders to support and take ownership of the process to achieve the desired outcome is imperative and it hinges absolutely on our ability to speak to our people in the language that will galvanize and mobilize them to participate in the 2020 uh, census. To this end, the Commission will be relying on your expertise, as members of the committee, the structures and the experiences to drive the message into every home and household to drum up support and participation in the 2023 population, population and housing census, in order to achieve to ensure that members of the National Census Publicity Committee have good grasp of the processes and methodology of the 2023 Population Housing Census, a workshop will be organized to keep members 
of the committee up to date on the preparation for the census. In addition, the committee uh, should be rest assured of the Commission's full support for it to deliver on the very important national assignment. Before I conclude, I'd like to add that we commend Mr. President for also creating a good environment for us to operate. He has approved that we complete our uh, new headquarters building. He's given us a lot of money for that. And um, the commission was operating, or so is still operating, in about uh, 21 states without uh, permanent office. He has approved that we build model offices there. It's still part of his achievement. And uh, where we have offices and data centers, he has also provided money for the renovation of those um, offices. So on this note, I'd like to thank uh, all of us that are here to support um, this uh, entire process and um, I want to assure uh, and reassure my fellow countrymen and women and the international community the National Population Commission is irrevocably committed to ensuring that everything about the 2023 population and housing census is done rightly and professionally. We have the clear vision commitment and capacity to deliver on this historic mandate and uh, I wish to on behalf of National Population Commission register our profound appreciation to the Honorable Minister of Information, Culture and Tourism for accepting to chair this very important uh, committee which is at the heart of the success of the census. You and your team of uh, professionals and um, other stakeholders are highly commended and uh, we thank you immensely for that. Uh, I wish to salute your commitment uh, to service of uh, our fatherland. I thank you. You count you count. Every Nigerian count. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, the Chairman, National Population Commission. Very distinguished ladies and gentlemen, they say the eyes are the silent orators of the mind. For those of us who are gifted in the art of reading people's eyes, are matching it with their minds. You can see that this chairman is a very modest speaker, a visionary leader, whose leadership style is defined by results. I believe he's going to achieve greater success concerning this assignment. Thank you so much. Quickly, we'll move into the question and answer section. I want to believe the media will want to ask one or two questions. We'll just take it. Please, like I said from the onset, when you are recognized to speak, please, you tell us your name, your media organization, and please, let us be decent in the use of language. Please restrict your questions to the issues addressed by the chairman MPC. At this point, I would like to declare the floor open for your questions, please. Just raise your hands and let's see. Let me start from the back today. The man at the center, one. The lady, two. Okay. Please give the microphone to them, please. Thank you. 
All right. Good morning. My name is Mark Isibo. I come from Leadership Newspapers. Um, the chairman, please. I want to know how much the federal government is spending on this exercise and when it is expected to elapse. Thank you. The lady, please. Good morning, distinguished chairman. My name is Glory Ohago. I talk for Voice of Nigeria. Please, I'd like clarifications. So we've watched that beautiful documentary in English language. How many languages have you translated it into to ensure that it gets to the grassroots? Um, you have gone on enumeration to different zones for the trial census. I got to my village and I don't think they got to my village. And it was a trial. I come from a very nondescript village in Enugu State, Ogo, Ezio Hambo, and you have to take hills, undulates to get to them. I don't think they got to my village. So my concern is, are we sure that we have enough manpower to get to the zones, to reach the people, to ensure that everybody counts, I count, you count? Thank you. Mr. Chairman, sir. These are just the two questions from the media. You may wish to provide answers, please. Okay. Um, I want to give this answer to my uh, br brother from leadership. A lot of money has actually been given to the commission. Um, we started the enumeration area demarcation uh, about um, five years. Five years. So the money that was given was um, um, small then. But when Mr. President came on board, and uh, made up his mind, he once wanted to do census. He gave us an initial sum of um, 10 billion for us to do the enumeration era demarcation because it is um, an exercise that involves uh, the use of high end technology. We have been able to produce a digital map, map that you used to have in a very, um, very big papers, and uh, you had to draw and design. Because of the use of this technology, GIS, GPS, satellite imageries, and um, deploying people to all nooks and crannies of this country, uh, we were able to finish and run up the exercise uh, quickly. Uh, we also, in the conduct of the census preparatory activities, we were given the, the, the greater chunk of money came in in 2021, um, 2022. Uh, uh, national budget were given 197 billion though not all have been disbursed to us and we are continually spending as I speak to you our people are out there in every state being trained the national training then we will go to local government training every local government will have our uh, staff trained. Uh, the exercise is very expensive because of use of technology. So I can assure you that once we do this, we don't need to spend this much again for subsequent censuses. It's just going to be an update of uh, what we have done. And um, it is not just census, even our Civil registration and vital statistics system has been digitized and uh, we are 
collaborating with uh, other data generating agencies, providing data, interoperating with them to make sure Nigeria is transformed. NIPOS is uh, working with us seriously to uh, modernize the, the ad addressing system uh, of the postal service. We have so much resources and to justify the money that has actually been spent, we just need to assure Nigerians, come and look for data, we will provide you the requisite data. Thank you very much. Then the, the, the second question is, I, I, I can assure you, your village has been covered. I assure you, your village has been covered. There is no place we have not visited. We, we, our staff even went as far as to Sambisa Forest, where we have security challenge. We went as far as to those places. So I assure you that no one will be left out in the entire census uh, taking. And uh, all structures have been captured and have been geocoded. Your house in the village has been captured, captured and is geocoded. Uh, if you want a personal engagement with us, come to our Kato department in the headquarters and we will show you your house. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Very distinguished ladies and gentlemen, we are now moving straight into the formal inauguration of members of the National Publicity and Community Mobilization for 2023 National Population Census by the Honorable Minister. At this point, I would like to request the Honorable Minister to please conduct the formal inauguration. Thank you, Honorable Minister. Thank you. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you for attending today's inauguration of the 2023 National Census Publicity Committee. The task before the Publicity Committee is huge. Reaching our country's diverse population will require sustained, multidimensional, and intensive campaign. However, I am satisfied that with the track record and the commitment of the members who have been carefully selected, we will carry out our assignment successfully. The census is taking place close to the election period, when the din of campaign noise is loudest. We must therefore ensure that the electionary campaign does not hinder the sensitization of our people and find a deserved place for the census in national discourse. I wish to assure the Commission of the readiness of the Federal Ministry of Information and Culture to support the publicity campaign for the census using all the existing structures and facilities. I am delighted to note that the Census Policy Committee will be, replicate, will be replicated in all states of the Federation as well as all local government areas. This is a bold step that will ensure that the Census message gets to the grassroots. Population census is a people-oriented activity, and all the persons resident in Nigeria must be informed, sensitized, and educated about it. Consistent, aggressive, and grassroots publicity is required in order to reach the people. Please note that it is not just enough 
for the people to be counted, they must understand why, when, where, and how they will be counted if we must secure their cooperation and support for the census. This admonition of why and how takes me back to a conversation I had with a driver of mine about 30 years ago. He was recruited from a neighboring country and I asked him to please deposit his driving license so that I'll be able to have a form of security. And he asked me, Master, why do you want my driving license? I said, because I don't know where you are from. If you steal my car, how do I trace you? He said, Master, even if I steal your motto, you're not going to solve my problem. And I said, what's your problem? He said, Master, I get two wives and nine picking. And if I steal your motto, you're not going to solve my problem. And I said, something must be wrong with you. I'm your boss. I have only one wife and four children. You are my driver. You have two wives and nine children. There is something wrong with you. He said, Master, I'll be one ask you to. What is wrong with you? <laughs> he said, with all the money, where are you getting from your food? Only one wife and four people if you get. This, this shows that um, census is very important. And children mean different things to many people. And when we go to talk about population, you need to tell them why, how, and when. At this juncture, we all members now stand up and remain standing, members of the, of the Publicity Committee. All members, please stand up and remain standing. Thank you. Thank you very much. It is now my pleasure to inaugurate the National Census Publicity Committee to the glory of God and the progress of Nigeria. I wish us all a fulfilling and successful national assignment. Thank you very much. Mr. President has taken the bull by the horn.